So how you doing? Hey, so I want to give you a little insight here. So there's things that go on behind the scenes that you never see. And one of the things you never see, my process of learning new things, I'm always learning and I'm always talking to folks. You see, a lot of the best builders in the world probably don't even have a YouTube channel. And YouTube is commonly used as the main source of information nowadays. So today I'm gonna to give you my opinion on a few things and maybe you can take it one step further. So there are many sources of information out there and I found one of the best comes from the people who have been doing it the longest. Now there are lots of books out there, something you very rarely hear about, but there are lots of books. These books were written by people who have been doing this for a very long time and they have a lot of information to share. So today I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do and why I do it. And today it's going to be about transfers. I did a video similar to this a while back talking about blowdown. And today I want to talk about the transfer. And I might even go back into the blowdown a little bit on this video, just because I feel like it's good information that should be discussed more often. All right, so let's get on with this and talk about transfers. We're talking about transfers. So I'm gonna make a very simple diagram here. All right, we got an exhaust port and then we got transfer over here. We might even have two on each side. All right, now this area here, the distance between the top of the exhaust and the top of the transfer, this is your blowdown. But what I want to talk about is the transfer at the upper and the transfer at the lower. Now your lowers are typically going to be larger. So imagine a tunnel. Now you guys have used garden hoses before and Iron Horse has talked about this many times before. The transfer, you got to think of what he calls or what is commonly referred to as like a nozzle effect. You know, you, you got a, a big hose at the one end and a little end at the other end. And because the water coming through the big end has to increase in speed in order to get the same volume out the little end, you get sort of a nozzle effect. Does that make sense to you? You get kind of a nozzle effect going on there because you're going to move the same volume of water that was coming through the big end out through the little end. And in order for that to happen, it has to get, start moving at a higher velocity coming out the little end. The reason that happens, let me show you. So we're gonna do another quick picture here. We're gonna draw this shape, then we're gonna draw this shape. All right, now the distance from here to here, this will cause you to increase velocity, this angle, okay? This is one of the main areas I'm finding more power in these home lights. So you can use something called Bernoulli's equation because basically what I just drew there is the Venturi of a carburetor. So you would have fuel coming in here, you'd got a throttle valve here, a choke valve here, and because the air coming from here has to increase velocity to get through here. It is now below atmospheric pressure in here, so it causes the fuel to get drawn through the carburetor. This is, you know, part of Bernoulli's equation. This is why carburetors work. But how I do it is I kind of look at the transfers the same way. So the home light transfers are very simple straight. So home light transfers commonly look like this. Just two transfers with a divider. And one of the things I like to do is to create sort of this here shape. So I will take the transfer 
and take it out as far as I can this way. I can't do much about the center one, but I can do it here. So in order for these transfers to actually increase power, I have to use the same effect as the carburetor. So the same volume of air that's coming in at the beginning has to come out to the end. And in order to do that, it increases velocity. So this is how I look at it. I use the transfer itself to help increase power. Now say you got the same transfers and the only port work you do is on the corner because your case, let's say your case transfer volume is here and you come in and only do this kind of a shape. Okay, you will gain some performance, but not to the same level as you will if you can do that. Now, if all you do is round over these corners to help with the flow between the crankcase and the transfer, you will get some improvement in performance, but not as much as if you took it all the way out and created this kind of a shape. Another thing I want you to think about is if you're using Bernoulli's equation, like this is just an example, like say this number is four, now what I'd be saying here, the four would be like the distance from here to here and say this number is two. Alrighty. So this would be the distance from here to here. The pressure, because of this cone shape, the pressure will be cut one half where the speed coming through will double. So think about that a little bit. Let me show you another picture. Let's look at one of these simple home light style transfers again. Whatever, now whenever you're looking at the, 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 at the volume of air coming from the crankcase, whatever you get at the beginning, will be the same at the end if the shape is straight up and down the whole distance. But if you take it into a cone shape and say this cone shape is double the size as the top, okay? You understand? The volume of air here, the pressure will be cut in half at the exit but the velocity would double. Now velocity does affect performance considerably because it helps with your blowdown. So let's go back to this picture here with our blowdown. You see this area here that has our blowdown? See, this is the amount of time your exhaust gases have to get out before the opening of the transfer. Now imagine at the moment of explosion, you have, oh, I used this number before, I say, say a thousand PSI. Now we've all talked about pressure testing our saws and all of that stuff. What do we pressure test them at? We typically pressure test it around, or myself, I pressure test at 10 PSI. So let's just say we have 10 PSI in the crankcase. At the exit, if our shape is twice as big at the bottom as it is at the top. Now remember, I'm just giving this as, as an example. This is not going to be accurate for the transfers of each saw. This is just an example. So just using this example of what I showed you, that means we would have five PSI up here, but the velocity would be times two. Now, how, do this, how does this help us? The blowdown 
because of the five PSI coming off the transfer, what's our pressure have to be in order for the air, in order for our new charge to be able to come up the transfer? It needs to be below this five PSI number, correct? This is how I believe it. I believe this pressure has to drop to zero or as close to zero before the transfers will actually work. Now you can achieve a zero PSI in 20 degrees of blowdown or less, but there are things to consider. And I, this is a but. There's different techniques that can be used to give yourself more power in the blowdown zone. See, some folks will prefer a lower blowdown number and some folks prefer a higher blowdown number. So there's different techniques and different reasons you would affect this blowdown number. See, the goal here is not just to get it to zero PSI, but to try to get some, but to try to get more exhaust gases out. You see, the combustion chamber, even though it went to zero PSI, there's still exhaust gases in there. And the goal is to get as much of that out as possible. You see, those exhaust gases that still exist in the combustion chamber have to mix with what comes out of your transfers at the next charge. And the more of those exhaust gases you can get out, the more charge you can get in, which will give you more power. But there's different techniques to do this. You see, one technique you can use is to raise the exhaust port up to say this point, which would increase your blowdown time. Now you'll increase the RPM of the saw, but another technique you can do is to not raise it as high but go a little wider. So this will actually give you a larger volume in the blowdown zone to help those exhaust gases escape. Now some saws will prefer the roof to be raised and some will prefer it to be widened and some will prefer it to be a mix of both. And everything you work on could be different. Some will behave better if you go higher and some will behave better if you go wider. And another thing to consider is the user. Some users will prefer the performance of the higher roof than they will the lower roof with a wider port. So a lot of this is factored in by what the user likes. So with a lot of this, you have to factor in the person who's actually using it. There is no right or wrong. Many techniques work. But what you got to do is you got to figure out what you like. Now, let's get back into the transfers, what this whole video was supposed to be about. Now, for something else that might blow your mind. Uh, you know how I told you about the straight transfers? And I told you you might have 10 PSI in the crankcase? Well, because of this setup, you would have 10 PSI at the upper, but your velocity would not change. So you saw in the other picture how, whenever you, I went to this shape, I was explaining how you can drop to like five PSI. You see what I'm talking about? Something that'll blow your mind there. This will cause you to lose pressure so a lower blowdown number typically will have a smaller lower transfer because of how the pressure is also involved in thinking about how your charge is going to come up it's up to you to decide which technique you prefer Let's draw a picture of another transfer again, but this time I'm just going to draw one transfer. We'll make this our little end and we'll make this our big end. But what we're going to do is we're going to go bigger on the big end. Say we're going to go to here and here. Now with what I just showed you, that means we want to try to get as much of this shape as possible, which will help increase velocity coming out the little end. You see, now remember, 
the better your velocity is coming out of here, the more violently it will hit the already spent exhaust gases and help push them out the exhaust port. The thing I wanna to talk to you today about is the one thing that might help you a little bit in your performance, and that's with your grinding techniques. Now, let's say a person ground their exhaust port from here to here, okay? Now, what I wanna to talk to you about is the texture of it. You see, if you only use the grinder a lot of times, your edge will be bumpy, okay? So I don't recommend a super bumpy texture like that that you get with just the, the die grinder. I recommend finishing it off smooth and then coming back with something about 80 grit and texturing it. That's my recommendation. The reason is because, you see these bumps? So what you'll get is you get like little pockets in here that swirl. Okay, and the, and the more texture you have in here, the more of these little pockets you'll get that swirl. And these pockets will create friction with the air coming through. And as you keep going, the different layers of air with friction on each other will cause a barrier down here. So imagine this is like a barrier of air that's kind of sitting still on the edge. And because of the friction of the air against the air that's moving, this barrier, whereas a smoother texture finished off with 80 grit, you, this barrier won't be as much. Now you can use this to your advantage. Now sometimes it's best to use this super rough texture to your advantage and sometimes it's not. So I don't like a super heavy texture in the transfer in this area, which will effectively reduce the amount of velocity coming through the transfer to a point. Like remember me telling you about Bernoulli's equation, how you got this point to this point and then this point to this point, like it changes all that. Well, if you got a super heavy texture with just your grinder, the distance from here to here because of this barrier is actually smaller. Now, if you can run a smoother texture finished off with about an 80 grit, well, then this barrier will be much smaller, which effectively gives you a bigger distance from here to here, which will help with the velocity coming out the end. Now, again, this is the way I look at it. Not everybody looks at it the same way as I do, but this is how I view it. So whenever you look at a lot of my port work nowadays, you'll see that my transfers are smoother. That's just because I'm thinking of this barrier. I want this barrier to be smaller in the transfers because I'm trying to get this velocity as high as possible at the end. Now, another thing to consider, let's let's not just talk about the texture of the port work, but let's say you have kind of these hills and valleys in here, okay? And this hill and valley work will still have the texture. All right, so this will happen because you got a little heavy handed at this spot and a little heavy handed at this spot, but not so much at this spot. So whenever you're doing your transfer work, try to keep this edge as straight and smooth as possible. Don't let yourself get these hills and valleys because you can imagine it would create a nice big pocket of air in these areas, closing off your barrier. And in fact, if you get really bad with this, you can actually cause yourself to lose some of the performance you were hoping to gain. So try to keep this smooth. And then whenever you're finished, the last step you do is to come in and, and rough it up, texture it up with uh, something at around 80 grit. So my transfer work might have a little bit a smoother finish than what you're used to seeing, but that's just because I'm using a 220 grit, but an 80 grit will work just fine. The main thing I want you to take in here is this hill and valley situation. Try to avoid that. Try to keep your, your, your curves, all your curves, everything as a smooth transition as possible. Now you will see a lot of opinions on YouTube about this and opening up the lower transfers and so forth. Um, so my recommendation is to not listen to anything I just told you. 
my recommendation is to do it yourself and try it. Do a saw where you don't open up the lowers as much, then do a saw where you opened up the lowers bigger. So do one that has a nice big wavy grind, do one that has a, a more mellow grind, and then do one the way I said, that's smooth and then finished off with like an 80 grit. My recommendation is for you to go out and do it yourself and try it. Learn from your own experiences. Don't let me or anybody else tell you what to do. The best way to really learn is to go do it yourself. So I hope I didn't bore you to death with this video, but I wanted to make it and I hope you take something from it. The main thing I want you to take from this video though, is to experience it yourself. Go out, try it, try it many different methods and learn, learn, learn. Figure out what you like, because in the end, the saw is going to perform the way you want it to perform, not the way I want it to perform. So if you like it a certain method, then use it because that's what you like. I've learned everything that I know and how I like my saws to run because I went out and I did it myself. I didn't take the information from one guy or another guy or another guy and come up with some conclusion based on what these different people tell me. I figured it out on my own by doing the work myself. But for now, we're gonna leave this with the transfers and a little bit on the blowdown and hey, Catch you in the next one. Later.